But yeah. So let's just get my uh, my testimony up. Yeah, so uh, basically, I was a bit like, uh, when I was coming to share my test meal, or writing on my test meal, I was a bit confused at when to start off. So I, don't, I didn't really want to give a, a test meal of my whole life kind of thing, because uh, in the end of the day, um, you know, that would have been a lot longer than 25 or 30 minutes. But I kind of wanted to focus on the main thing, the main battle I've been going through at the moment, which is uh, my addiction to porn, and uh, how much it's just crippled my life and uh, destroyed my family, to the point where, like, you know, Oh, maybe even a couple of months back. I'm not sure how long it was now, but yeah, it's kind of like proper flying by. That like we were on the verge of just not being a family anymore. We were on the verge of just being um, like separated. And uh, you know, I don't think the kids have ever had, ever really have had an idea of what's been going on. Um, but you know, it, it, we this this family is almost destroyed by the things I was doing. My addiction to porn, my addiction to just sex and any, anything. Like they're just chasing their thrill. That's kind of what I focused my. Um, my testimony on today um so yeah basically so i've been a christian all my life and i've I kind of, i've claimed to follow god and to be honest even in the times uh, i felt distant and i said i wanted nothing to do with him i can't lie but actually let's say i actually needed him and uh, i would always end up going back to him regardless how many times i said i wanted nothing to do with god uh now you know uh Growing up, basically, uh, you know, I had this, uh, I had this awful ability to kind of look at me, you uh, know, in a way of uh, I had a very, a very bad view of myself, and the fact that I was very um, insecure, uh, very focused on the fact that if I had to do something, it had to be done to the best of my abilities and outperform anybody else. I was so focused on me, I had such a pride complex, I had such a, uh, a focus on me being the strongest individual, me being the best individual, to the point where I would go out looking for scraps with people uh, just because I wanted to, uh, uh, stupidly, I wanted to show my dominance. Now, um, yeah, so, but this also came around from me being insecurity, grew grew my addictions to porn and grew this, uh, this, this, this festered porn because, all my sexual desires, because I sat there thinking like, I wanted to feel power. I wanted to feel powerful, and porn gave me that release and gave me that ability to think. Yeah, like you know, it gave me this. It gave me this feeling of being okay. Now, as I grew up and as I as I got older, this uh, this feeling of uh, this porn, I didn't feel. I didn't get the same uh, feelings from it. Uh, and you know how it always goes. You always uh, you, you you know you're always ch- chasing basically the next high. Eventually, after a while, porn isn't enough, and you start chasing other things, and. Uh, I, I remember going down this uh, route and uh, even when I was younger, uh, I think I had a porn and sexual addiction since, well, not sexual addiction, but porn uh, addiction since uh, maybe even 10 or a proper young age, mate. And uh, it has been, it had a strong hold over my life and relationships. I was always stuck to just, I, I had always stuck to just watching porn and that was, uh, that was my way of kind of saying, oh yeah, you know, porn's not bad. It's like, it's just me and some person like on a on a screen. It's kind of nothing to do with anything else. Like I'm not harming anybody. I'd, I'd always try and make um, what, what would you call it? Like a a compromise. I was trying to basically, as if I was trying to say to God, oh, it's not, you know, it's not that bad. I'm just, uh, I'm basically, you know, it's just me on a screen. I'm not hurting anybody. It can't be that bad. So I'd always try and think of ways to uh, to justify to me and even to God, which is stupid because you know they, they he is the lawmaker. There, there's nothing goes above him, and nothing is is greater than the laws he made, and he knows it perfectly. And uh, yeah, but this is me. I'm sitting there going, oh, you know what? I, I can handle this. This is me. I'll I'll deal with it, kind of thing. So I stuck to just watching porn. But then, as as obviously I said earlier, you know, it never just sticks to porn. It always goes further, you know, eventually you're chasing someone else. So you look for new things. And that started with sex to another woman whilst I was in the army and also dating my old future wife. And this continued into my marriage. I couldn't stop it. And honestly, to be honest, I'm not going to lie, I didn't want to. I love the attention and I love the thrill. But I would never meet these people. I would just stick to messaging because in my mind, again, justification, I hadn't cheated because we hadn't, we hadn't had sex or hadn't met up. Uh, but like before, eventually the messaging wasn't enough. And luckily, or unluckily, depending on which way you look at it, Megan, my wife, had found out about these women. And uh, that closed down quickly. I took anti-porn courses, paid, uh, well, I, people, this is the worst thing about it. People paid a lot of money for me to go on these courses to try and stop these. But because my heart wasn't in the right place, because I wasn't genuinely trying to stop it, it was just me trying to make it look like I was going for the motions, 
I went on these courses with a complete wrong uh, mindset. Uh, I did, you know, I took all these steps to stop accessing porn and uh, all these messaging sites or whatever, uh, apps that can block stuff and all this stuff. But I'm not being funny. But if you, if you could have every conceivable thing in place to uh, to say, oh yeah, I'm not going to start watching porn anymore. Uh, but I guarantee it, you would always, every single time, always find a way to the point where these apps made someone else create a password for you so you couldn't access it which was utter ridiculousness because I did a lot. I found a way around it every single time and it never stopped me. Um, so yeah, these did absolutely nothing. Uh, and although I didn't end up speaking to these women again, I ended up finding porn again and it, and it felt like because I, it was harder to access, it made it more of a thrill. So I got kind of hooked back on porn again and uh, I was basically the, the, the base level again. So again, after watching porn, Oh, excuse me. After watching porn for a few uh, few months and stuff, uh, continually, I'd watch it for a few weeks, uh, get found out, or eventually, for some reason, confess, and then I'd go and tell Megan. And um, you know, basically, after I told Megan, I was kind of uh, you know saying I-, I won't do it again. I'll do all these things, and uh, which we all know is absolutely stupid because I was trying to do things in my own strength, which is the main thing. And uh, there's one thing I found out is uh, I am not a strong-willed person at all, unfortunately. Uh, or fortunately, because it means I had to fully rely on God. And uh, but yeah, I I was just uh, not in a good way. I uh, I so I took all these anti porn courses and I had put all these steps in to wanted to keep chatting to these. But like I said, I love the friendly intention I got, uh, and I thought, you know what, this is something. This this the reason I'm struggling with porn is probably because I'm in the army. I'm surrounded by people who were just you know. People are always talking about the, the the girls they've met up with, uh, all the stuff they've done with them. You know the fact that they've got more than one girl on the go. In the army, it was a big culture, pride, and just what you could get from the world, and what you know all the feelings of uh, power you can get from it. So there was nothing wholesome in this whatsoever, and I was surrounded by that. But instead of you know what Christ asked her to do, he you know, to be in the world but not of the world. I was fully in the world and of the world, and I can't I can't hide that or deny that. Now, obviously, I thought, oh, leaving the army, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd find that uh, it would somehow miraculously just kick me into gear and I'd be like, what the am I doing? Oh, like, I need to focus on God again. Because I seemed to think before I joined the army, I was a good Christian boy, which wasn't the case. I was a bit of a, uh, I'm trying to think of a word to say, and it's not swearing. Uh, I wasn't the greatest of person uh, when, uh, before I joined the army. I was, like I said, I was looking for scraps and any any feeling I could get to boost my ego, boost my pride and, you know, boost my power I was feeling. So I, I, yeah, like I said, I left the army thinking that somehow miraculously I was going to recover. Uh, and I was given a rude awakening when I continued to watch porn and next, uh, and seeking that next feeling. Unfortunately, I eventually met up with a woman. It was at this point, I could no longer defy, deny how far I'd gone. Uh, no matter how much I tried to convince myself that this was still okay. I had done the thing that I swore I'd never do. Uh, and now my wife didn't find out from me that I cheated because uh, I was too much of a coward to come clean about this. I could, I would gladly uh, do anything I'd done in the army, anything. I'd rather go to Afghanistan. This is genuine. I'd rather go to Afghanistan. I'd rather go to uh, live back in Germany on the old concentration camps uh, that we used to live in, in uh, for the two years I was out there than come clean to my own wife that I'd watched uh, porn and I was speaking to another girl and I even met up with another girl. Like that was... That was just a step too far for me. I couldn't. I remember praying to God multiple times, like, look, Lord, um, I will stop watching porn. I remember bargaining with God. How stupid is this? I remember bargaining with the Almighty saying, I will stop watching porn. I will stop meeting up with these people if you just keep this from Megan. And obviously, of course, that's not how he works. He works in uh, rude awakenings, but absolute unabounding grace and mercy. And unfortunately for me, Megan found out, but not because of me, the girl I was seeing uh told my uh t- told Megan, told my wife. Uh so at this point I'd hit absolute rock bottom. I had nowhere else to go in my marriage and uh my my marriage was a, a wreck, divorce was on the horizon and I sat there thinking I looked at myself and I was thinking, you know what, it would have been just better if I wasn't alive. It would have been better if I wasn't born. It'd be better if I didn't do this because Megan had done nothing. My wife had done nothing wrong. My kids had done nothing wrong. I've got four kids, beautiful kids under six. And I was destroying their life with what I was doing. 
And I sat there thinking it would have been better if I wasn't here. It would have been better if they didn't have to grow up with his dad who couldn't stop watching porn or even looking and, and speaking to other women. And I started thinking, I've got a, a the, the, something has to change here. And I remember listening to a guy called Andrew Womack. Um, he was saying uh, a guy, a guy who, who had similar, he was committing adultery with with his missus, on his missus, sorry. And he came to me and he goes, look, I've tried everything. Was like, I've got to the end of myself. I can't. And Andrew Romo just turned around and goes, that's, that's brilliant. That's the strongest position you've ever been in because there's nothing left of you. And at the end of yourself is when God's God's resources truly begin. That's when God has, you have no choice but to rely on God. And I was like, look, okay, then this is it. I need to give this to God. And I was like, the only, I, I, you know, other than turn back to Paul, the only person who never left me across the whole thing was God the same person who took all of my sin and died on a cross in agony alone. And I had spat on his face time and time again and made his grace cheap. Yet he still stood there holding his hand out and asking me to just to give him all of my problems, all of it. So I decided, you know what? I decided enough was enough and I needed a way out of this pit. And he redeemed my marriage. Honestly, it's uh, it, I still to this day right now cannot explain what happened. I don't even know when it began. I just remember having a new a new view of porn. I, I sat there thinking, don't get me wrong, I'm not I'm not clean of it. I'm not like perfectly, you know, never going to watch porn again. Unfortunately, I'm going to struggle with this for the rest of my life. But I know there's a different way of doing this now, and I know that if I slip up, it will be a slip up. It's not going to be me going back into that pit again. It's me going to be slipping up and falling over for a short period of time. And like it says in the Bible, the righteous man may fall, um, but God will redeem them. And he picked me up and he will pick me up. And every single time I go in this pit, he will pick me up again. So I sat there and think, you know what? I've made his grace cheap. I need to turn to him and I need to give it to him. And he redeemed my marriage. Again, like I said, I can't remember when he did it. I don't even remember what happened. I just remember having a new view of this. And I was like, I couldn't stand it. I, I wanted to be far away from it. I was like, this is something I don't want to do. And it gave me a new love for my wife. Uh, it gave me a new passion for my wife and my kids and my family. Now I've still got a long way to go. I'm still, I can still be an aggressive, angry person. I can be a stupidly angry person sometimes, and obviously that will, you know, lead back to Paul if I'm not careful. I've still got work to do, and I still have got stuff to do. But God has redeemed me in a massive way. Uh, and you know, I had turned to Megan and said, "I don't want to quit." Uh, at this point, this is how much, this is how bad I was. I had turned to Megan at one point and said, "I don't want to quit porn. I don't want our marriage, to, I, I want, and I want our marriage to be over." And God still used that situation when I told my own wife, this is it, this is this is game over for our marriage. This is I want nothing more to do with our marriage. I would rather leave you and watch porn. Imagine saying that to your own partner. And that's something I was openly saying to her. I had no, I, I was like, no, I would rather, I can't quit porn uh, and I can't promise you what you want. So you're going to be the easiest thing to lose here. I mean, how stupidly and cowardly is that? But I had said this, and God still worked in that situation. He still said, oh, no, mate, that, that's not too far for me. Nothing's too far for me. And like, you could do anything, and, I, and you know, I will still be there to redeem you. And I sat there thinking, you know what? I need to give myself to this guy. So only about, I think it was two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I decided to get baptized. And I thought, you know what, this is going to be the thing. So I, the, the only thing that I want this baptism to do is actually to show publicly I belong to God now. Nothing, there's nothing about this. I belong to God and God alone. And uh, lo and behold, like I said, like I still have slip ups. Only two week, two weeks after I was uh, no, sorry, one week after I was baptized, I ended up watching porn again uh, on the Friday, the Monday, and the Tuesday. I still remember it. And I sat there thinking, you know what, I've done it again. But there was something different this time. I sat there thinking, no, this isn't, this isn't the same. I, I, I may have watched porn. I may have slipped up. And I may have gone, I may have isolated myself slightly, but this isn't going to be, this is not going to be the thing that defines me now. I, I turned around and I was like, this is a new chapter for me. I am now going to sit there, turn to God and say, look, I give this to you. I need help with this. And uh, on Friday, when I met with Ivor, I told Ivor about it. I was like, look, I've, I've watched porn, mate. I was like, uh, I need to come clean to Megan. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, but I'm just expecting, you know, an argument between us. I expected this. The massive epic battle because it, it was every time I watched porn, every time we had this problem, me and Megan did argue, not because she was a horrible person, but because I had that defensive and aggressiveness inside me. But I was just like, look, I need to humble this. I need to just realize that actually I am a sinner. She's a sinner. We're all sinners. So, like, but like, I am, I'm, I'm a new person, but only due to God. I am, I'm a new person in Christ. 
So I thought, you know what, screw this. I'm going to go home and I'll tell Megan about this. <laughs> Obviously, Megan, the woman's intuition, was miles ahead. She knew. She knew I'd watched porn. God had, God had given her that feeling. She then spoke to Gemma, uh, Ivor's missus, and, you know, Ivor then got a message from her as well. And uh, before they... I didn't know this until obviously I'd, t- I'd come clean, but like, you know, God was well and truly working in that situation and just took me to rely on him and go, okay, honesty, honesty has to win up because when you drag that sin in the open, it has no power anymore. And I'd been told that so many times, but seeing it in action is completely different. So when I did drag that, I was like, no, this is, this is the end of it. I was like, you have no power here now, porn. I was like, well, I've given myself to God. There is no power. Of you. you have no power over me. Like God sits in that throne over my marriage and my life. And dragging out in the open just felt so good. Just felt amazing. And Megan just sat there going, I know you've watched porn. I was like, you do realise before you even came clean, I'd forgiven you. And God had as well. God had forgiven you. Everything you've done, past, present and future, has been put on Christ. He died on the cross and took it to hell. There's like, you, like, there is nothing you can't be forgiven for, except for blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And I was like, you've watched porn. I was like, but, you know, you ask for forgiveness, God given it to you. And I was like, flipping egg. So... I watched porn after a week of, after being baptised and I wasn't going to self-pity anymore because God didn't want me that. God told me to gear up, trust him, and he'd only stand in his promise to me and my family that he will gain a victory for me because he's already won it on that cross. And I can never understand why he saved a wretch like me, but only because of the amazing grace and the amazing love that he gave me, I can be here sharing this testimony of a life-changing thing that God had done in me. Uh, but yeah, that's... Uh, that's a small story of a small segment of my life, but it was uh, probably the far, the biggest thing I've ever had to fight and probably will have to fight as well. But like I said, he, he didn't just do it. He knocked out of the ballpark and I flipping, I sit there day after day, yeah. walk to work, surrounded by people, watch porn, surrounded by people who do all this stuff. And I'm just like, God can redeem you, mate. Like you're not too far gone. No one's too far gone, man. Nobody. If God can reach down, like Paul said, uh, you know, I'm the chief of sinners, mate. Paul never met me. I'd I'd take him round town, mate. I'd flipping I'd show Paul what a chief sinner was like, mate. And uh, he's sitting there talking to you now, sharing his testimony. God does amazing things. He always continued to do amazing things. I'm not I'm not perfect. Never will be. And I'll guarantee, give it a few months' time, I'll probably have a new testimony. But the one thing I will always stand on, and the one thing I will never forget, is the fact that God didn't make me a self pitying uh, coward. He made me a soldier for Christ. And uh, you know what? He gave me that love. He gave me that grace. He redeemed me. And I, and he only asked me to stand, put on the armor of God and stand firm. He would do all the fighting. He did all the fighting. He won it for me. I didn't have to do anything. I just had to wear a bit of armor and protect myself. And that's all I had to do. And when I finally trusted in God and finally said, yeah, this is what I needed to do, he smashed it. I absolutely smashed it. And he's continued to smash it as well. And our life is... Uh, <laughs> It's gone a lot better, mate. It's uh, it's been absolutely fantastic. I can't I can't say anything. It's been perfect, mate. It's been really has. So yeah, that's my testimony. So yeah, thank you for listening. Amen, 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 and another amen, and another amen, and another amen. I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that honesty. You know, this is what it's all about. You know, this is um, testimony. Will. You, you, you know help a lot of people right now because I, I i know what it's like to to be in the darkness i know what it's like to 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 be in that place of you know that double-mindedness i know what it's like to be in that place of being secretive i know what it's like to um to be in that place where you you, you know i'm not being honest I know what it's like to be um, deceiving uh, myself and others, you know. So I know, and, and I and I and I heard the freedom of Christ in you, you know. <clears throat> I come before you with a humble, humble and contrite heart, confessing my sins and seeking your presence renew a right spirit in me by your grace and mercy praise you lord as we exalt you hallelujah lift up my brother chris hallelujah as you come before him lord as you do not turn away the meek spirit in in jesus name we pray that was honest that was you you know know, bang on point that was truthful you know and and and, you know (laughs) 
God is doing a, a, a new thing in you, and uh, it was very, very clear. I loved what I loved what you what you shared about you know what you you know what I was hearing is what you can't do for yourself. The Lord is doing for you. You know you're 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 in His presence right now. You're walking through that sanctification process right now, and God is doing a new work in you. You 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 you, 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 you talked about how you've tried to do things in your own strength, how you've tried to do it in your own way but the lord is strengthening you right and you know that his hand is upon you and nothing nothing can separate you from his love and and, and you said i just want to pray for you i'm going to pray right now before before um um before i open up the meeting you know because you know I just want to just ask the holy spirit to just come you know and help you i just want to ask the holy spirit to come and continue to strengthen you i just want to ask the holy spirit to continue to lift you up and lift up your marriage and lift you up in your walk with him lift up your children lift up your family lift up your ministry right now holy spirit lord i pray lord i pray that you go and meet every supplication uh, that chris has described this morning lord lord i plead on behalf of of the of this group right here right now that the honesty and the level of honesty that we we heard today lord that that you 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 speak your unspeakable truths as we heard the yearnings and the groanings that are not too deep for anyone right here right now that you search our hearts but you also you also lift us up. You know what is in the mind. You know what is in the spirit because you intercede on our behalf according to you and the harmony of the will of God. So, Lord, we expect good things. And, Lord, I pray good things for for my brother's marriage. I pray good things for his family right now, Lord. You said in marriage to last unto death and to do us part right now, Lord. It can seem sometimes, you know, difficult in those areas, Lord, but you lift them up, Lord. You transform. So, Father, we pray that, Lord, as, as Chris declares through his testimony as he counts the things he's going through all joy lord and he chooses to believe you your word that says his faith has been tested and you help him stir up the spirit that is in him that's within him to endure all things in the name of jesus hallelujah lord so we ask for wisdom wisdom for knowing that you will give it to him thank you for letting him through the power of the Holy Spirit, declare this truth today, to declare his weakness today, that you will strengthen him in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for letting us know that we can walk through difficulties and be honest with our true believers and friends and those around us. Hallelujah. And we thank you that you don't see no lack in anything, Lord. Give us wisdom and opportunities in the name of Jesus to scold over our failures but you are here to overwhelm our failures with your generous grace. Father, we thank you, Lord, and forgive us sometimes for rushing ahead and making plans that that make us fail sometimes, Lord, that we know that we don't fail in you, that we can live out Ephesians 5 in our desperate desire when we do things, save his marriage in Jesus' name, that you will ultimately direct his steps. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that he chooses faith and he chooses the privilege of living with you because you are his father. Every moment in his house, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, brother. That was powerful. Very, very powerful. Amazing. Cotton, over to you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Fantastic. That was a fantastic share. Uh, and... Um, I was just thinking, like, your name there, Dragon, that how you blew the flame over that addiction and with the spirit of the Almighty. You know, it was really powerful. And I, I've, I've been that person too, you know, and uh, working with therapists and, and all sorts, you know, you know, lying next to a beautiful woman. And all I could think about was that... And I completely relate, and you told my story there, part of it. Um, therapists, you know, even went on some medication to to curb sexual arousal, but none of it worked. 
it's a threefold illness, physical, mental, and religious. And uh, I didn't have God in my life during this time. You know, and I'm glad that you were able to seek him. And, uh, you know, but for me, I looked at the solution in pornography and I got disassociated with just the uh, general accessible porn. So I went deeper. And then when that no longer satisfied me, I went deeper so into some very, very dangerous places. You know, seeking that thrill. Uh, I'm, I'm glad today that I haven't looked at Pornhub or X Hamster or anything of that nature. I've got, I mean, how long has it been? It's been seven and a half years off of that stuff. And uh, don't get me wrong, the TV remote, remote still sometimes goes through Babe Station, but it, it's not like it was. Mate, seriously, but I'm aware of it today. It still plays on my mind. I and mean, but the Lord, you know, I'm just grateful I found Faith Walk so I can look at things like objectifying and, you know, what drives me into that area. And uh, I balance it out. You know, the Lord works in mysterious ways like yourself uh, by revealing our truth to others as necessary or in my case he's diverted me by getting me to concentrate on stuff i need to concentrate on whether it's surrender or whatever anyway thank you for, that was your great great share brilliant colin god bless you brother mark over to you Yeah, God bless, God bless, Chris, man. Powerful, bro. Like, I, I like, I like the honesty in, in in your testimony, bro. Like, um, the part in there where you like reached that place where you realized that you you, you couldn't do it on your own. Do you know what I mean? And like, God, God hadn't wouldn't forsake you. Do you know what I mean? When you felt like you didn't have no one else around you, realizing that you had to um, you had to turn to God and you had to repent, repent, and surrender to Him for Him to actually help you and and guide you through the Holy Spirit to make better decisions. And then, like, when you got to that place where, obviously, you was baptised, and then you still committed that sin, a scripture just kind of licked me, yeah, when you, when, you, when you said that, yeah, because, um, like, I know it's like to, like, basically, let me read the scripture. I am I am spirit, unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do understand what I do for what I want to do, I do not do, but I hate I, what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do, I do not want to do, I agree the law is good. As it is no longer I myself who want to do it, but it is sin living in me. Do you get it? Like, so when we come to that place to realize that we are sinful and we could, we're always going to commit sins, unless we actually surrender to God and we allow the Holy Spirit to, to have its way with us, then we're going to keep like um do, doing doing that stuff, you know. But um yeah, it's just been a blessing to meet you, bro. Like, Obviously, you came to the prison and you met me outside the gate, man. Like, you prayed Ephesians 6 on me, do you know what I mean? And um, to, to come to your baptism, obviously, meet your family and 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 and, and see you get baptised as well. It's been a blessing, bro. Like, God bless you, man. Like I said, just keep keep up the good fight, man. Stay in the word, you know what I mean? Like, you're a powerful man of God. God's got a plan for you, bro. And, like, um, it's a process, isn't it? We can't expect to just... To just, like, obviously, um, get baptised and start to get in the word and expect to just... um be be perfect because none of us is perfect not even one so god bless you bro just keep up the good fight yeah oh, Amen, cheers mate man. and uh yeah just uh just what you're saying there and also what connor was saying as well it's just the fact that like uh it's um i, I had this warped view of baptism i didn't want to get baptized because i thought one well, i had to be perfect but then also i had this hope that baptism was going to be the, the the pinching point that just changed everything from from baptism on i'd be cured which is complete and utter Baptism, if it, you know, if it's not done correctly, you're just getting a dunk in water. But if you generally commit yourself to God, then you've just opened yourself up for more attack because the devil's now going to see you as more of a threat. And like, like in war, you don't, you don't target areas that aren't going to do you any harm. You go for the things that are going to do you harm in hopes that you can destroy it. 
And actually, it's, it's a bit of a blessing in disguise as well, because if you see yourself being attacked, it's because the devil sees you as a bit of a threat and he wants you to, and he wants to nullify that as well. So when, yeah, when, when kind of, when, when you're saying about you, you're flicking through babe station and stuff for that as well, and, uh, and it does, it will always crop up. Unfortunately, sex sells. So it's everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere. And, um, and not, I'm not going to lie, people, like, especially with, in the higher summer, people aren't dressing modestly. There's none of this stuff anymore. People just won't. And that's where you need to have that, that, that like new uh, new set of eyes on you and you know you know walking walking in the spirit and stuff like that and uh, it is it's constant spiritual warfare like every single morning you will have to stick on the armor of God it has to be somebody that it needs to become not a ritual but like a, it's a blessing it's God's given us is something so powerful and it's not just a it's not just a oh right this is a bit of a chore now let's do the armor of God and this is something I always fall for it's not a chore. God is God has given you something to to protect yourself, and if God has given you something, it's not second hand, it's not second best, it's the best it's ever going to be. And uh, sometimes you will take it off during the day, like I've done multiple times. Um, and you've got to learn to take your, to keep your foot on the pedal, because like yeah, like uh, yeah, I could easily slip up again. And baptism was a one and done fix. Like there there are times I will struggle again in the future, and it's learning the people around you, i.e. in faith walk, like the people I've met through faith walk yourself. Uh, Mark and also the people I've not met yet, but like you know, uh, 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 coming to these events on a Friday or even Mondays and just you know having the time to worship and pray together. These are the spiritual brothers. These are the same guys in your in your trench we are, and uh, it's it's learning that we are all of one company. We are all of one one army, and it's just learning to defend and pray for each other. It says in Ephesians that you meant to the end of the armor of God is pray for all Christians everywhere. So yeah, it's uh it's yeah it's eye opening. It sounds stupid. I've been a Christian for so long and. I feel like I've never read the Bible, but nowadays it's, it's, it's all coming live to me. It's brilliant. I love it. So, yeah. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Amen. Beautiful. And, and then, you know, just, 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 I'm just going to throw Matthew 5, 28 in just to give us a reminder of God's standards. Hallelujah. But I say to you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery in their heart. Remember the five second rule, guys. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh her glory to god bob's over to you <laughs> yeah good morning everyone um yeah thank you so much that was a powerful testimony um i just want to give glory to god because um he's able to turn people's lives around and i just feel like yeah i just yeah just say that we thank god that you've come into his marvelous light i mean we're living in a dark world and there's so many temptations there's so many things um out there in this world where we just have to keep on really um staying in the faith and like the word says there's no condemnation for those who are in christ so each time we just um keep on um, staying on the word you know what i mean even me I'm, 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 i only came to faith like six years ago but i'm still sometimes there's still take days where you just you, you fall but you have to just you come to him at the end of the day and say you know what i, I god i'm asking you to forgive my sins and you just start afresh because his mercies on you every morning so, um, yeah, that was a powerful testimony, and um, that's what I'd like to share. Thank you. Amen. That was powerful. Thank you, Bob. That's powerful. His mercies are new every morning. You know, I come to Christ six years ago, and he's doing a new work in us every day. I love that. Do you know what I mean? This is what Christ is doing. It's not what I can do. It's what Christ can do. Powerful. Is that young Gemma? That is. Morning, everyone. <laughs> running around. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, it was such a powerful, powerful testimony, and um, it it's um it's not a nice thing to talk about, is it? Do you know what I mean? It's easy. It's easy to talk about. Oh, I'm struggling with taking drugs, or I'm struggling with drinking. But when it comes to speaking about porn, it becomes um it becomes a taboo, doesn't it? Especially within the church community. And the problem is there's so many people that are struggling with it. I believe that your testimony will reach so many men and women that um, it will be able to help them because it needs to be spoken about more. It needs to be, it needs to be spoken about widely. Like Jesus can deliver us from these things, but I've never heard it spoken about in church. I've never heard, I, I don't hear about it 
like you might hear the odd comment of yeah you can be delivered from porn but then it's brushed over isn't it like okay if we can be delivered like what do we do like how do we get there do you know what I mean who's gonna help us who's gonna guide us who's gonna support us so like it it's not spoken about in that sense it's just spoken about on a quickly brushing over thing and um like I know for me um sex was a massive thing growing up from when I was younger because I just was always seeking attention from men like that's all that I wanted and it's um as I've gone on this journey um it's like you spoke about the modesty like understanding what's modest and what's not because as a Christian woman like for me to be walking around in a gym with my legs and my boobs out, it's not appropriate. Like, I don't want to be representing the body of Christ in that way. And, like, we, we me and I ever talk about it. We see people in our church, in our gym that claim Christian Christianity, but they're walking around completely half naked. And there's... There is a level, isn't it? Like we we should we shouldn't be causing our brothers and sisters to sin. The same as I think Ivor didn't realise once and he went on Facebook Live and he didn't have his top on and I was like, oh, You can't do that, like you've got to be modest, do you know what I mean? And he was like, Oh yeah, like sometimes we don't realise and this is the importance of the gathering of the group of the people that are going through the same thing so we can we can teach and encourage people um what's right and what's wrong because when you come from the world sex is so normal it's like everyone's at it everyone's sleeping with each other everyone's cheating on each other everyone's watching porn everyone's doing this and when you step out of that it's like where does that leave us we, it leaves our mind literally wandering all over the place. We don't know who to talk to because we think everyone's going to judge us. We feel holier than now. And it becomes a really typical place. But the fact is, like, deliverance is needed for things like this. And, and that's the blessing of deliverance ministries, but not only deliverance, um, that renewing of the mind and really coming to a place of um being able to renew our minds so we can have the mind like Christ because we shouldn't be doing these things and I've I like no I've come from that place where I've I've done these things and um thankfully God's delivered me and my husband from a relation into a faithful relationship where we don't ha- we don't cheat on each other we don't we don't have to watch porn we don't have to um act out wrongly within the relationship and and it's not an easy place to get to because when you're not used to that it is tough but um yeah, God is the resti- res- restorer, and, and I believe he reconciles us back to the place that we was originally meant to be, and you're going to go through challenges, but it will get easier. i got to go. It's amen. Cool. Amen, <laughs> amen, 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 amen. Such a powerful meeting this morning. I feel so blessed, Chris. Dragon, I love that name, Mr. Dragon, hallelujah, and I'll be seeing you later on, hallelujah, for the pleasure <laughs> of Double Bubble Chris, hallelujah, uh, I'm seeing Mark today, I'm seeing my brothers, you know, and we need it, you know, we need we need our help and support around us because, you know, things, are, things can get tough, you know, rest in peace, Agnes Helena Emmanuel, hallelujah, glory be to God, hallelujah, Father Lord, we thank you this morning lord we thank you for our brothers and sisters who, who strengthen us in times when we are in need father lord we thank you lord that you said go and make disciples of all nations you said go and make disciples Father, i pray that we that we go out 
and disciple others lord in the word of god in the word of truth lord hallelujah that we have that accountability amongst each other where we have places where we can go so we don't have to feel alone that we can reach out to you and to others lord thank you jesus that you said in those great commands to love the lord your god and to love your neighbor as yourself father lord we thank you lord that you give us plenty of neighbors our brothers and sisters, lift them up today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Strengthen us in our hearts and minds. Renew us, as Gem Gemma said. Continue to renew us in that heart, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Cleanse us. Purify our hearts in the name of Jesus, because we are the righteousness of Christ in you, in the name of Jesus. Lift us up this morning, Lord. Thank you for that testimony, Lord, that is full of you, your grace, your grace that's sufficient for each and every single one of us. Father, Lord, you said... <clears throat> If anyone lacks anything, give him wisdom to guide him through a decision or circumstance. Let him ask you, hallelujah, who gives to everyone generously, without rebuke, without blame. And we know it shall be given unto us. Hallelujah. Therefore, we can ask anything in faith nothing wavering to be filled with the knowledge of your will and in all wisdom and spiritual understanding so today i enclear my ear unto wisdom and apply it to my heart to understand it so that i may receive which has been freely given to me in the name of jesus i receive skill and godly wisdom and instruction and I discern and comprehend the words of understanding and insight through your word. I receive instruction in wise dealing and the discipline of wise thoughtfulness in the name of Jesus. Righteousness, justice, integrity, prudence, knowledge. Hallelujah. Ooh. And as a person of understanding, I acquired a skill from you. Father God. Hallelujah. So that I can keep it to defend and protect me and my loved ones and those around me in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, I love wisdom because she guards my heart. Hallelujah. Oh, I prize wisdom highly. Hallelujah. As Solomon said, he didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for girls. He didn't ask for fancy cars. He didn't ask for big houses. He didn't ask for big business. He didn't ask for uh, a big church. He didn't ask for a big ministry. He said, hallelujah. He said, give me wisdom. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We can embrace her. She gives to us a wreath of gratefulness in the name of Jesus. A wreath of gracelessness in the name of Jesus. Oh, a crown of beauty and glory that she will deliver us. Jesus has been made unto me wisdom. He's made unto you, Mark, wisdom. He's made unto you, Chris, wisdom. Gemma Wisdom, Zoe Wisdom, Mark Wisdom, Maxine, Gemma Barbs, Wisdom in the name of Jesus. And in him are the treasures of divine wisdom. In him are the treasures of divine wisdom. Hallelujah. Therefore, I will walk in the path of uprightness. When I walk, my steps shall not be hampered. My path will be clear and open and when i run i will not stumble father in the name of jesus i look carefully to how i walk because i have the mind of christ and i live purposely and worthily and accurately not as unwise and witless as i was before and as i sometimes can be and father you've given us a way out that when we do stumble that we can come straight to you and repent hallelujah and that freedom is instant, just like a get out of jail free card for us to be strengthened, to walk uprightly again with no condemnation. Hallelujah. Because you know what's in our heart in the name of Jesus. Thank you that we receive you in Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. What a powerful morning. Chris, thank you for setting that tone. Brothers and sisters, thank you for sharing back. Nourish amazing prayer. Oh, wow. Such a powerful morning. What a beautiful morning. May God bless you. May God keep you and join us Sunday evening for Psalms. We're back in the Psalms. Let's get rooted in the word, guys. We've got a new book. Still ain't decided yet. 
<laughs> it's like I'm keeping it. I'm keeping my cards close to the chest. I'm asking Holy Spirit, where are we going? I ain't even got there yet. Hallelujah! This is how good the Lord is. I'm excited. I look forward to seeing you guys, man. God bless you all. Have a blessed day in Jesus' name. Take care. What a wonderful testimony. Power in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Power in the name of Jesus.